Hey guys, this is HBK Grant, and today we are making a video about the Crystallization Catalyst Blueprint. Now, if you guys have been following the channel lately, I was uploading videos step by step as to cover all the resources that you have to farm for the Catalyst Blueprint. What I'll do is briefly discuss those resources that you need, and then from there on, we will dive right into farming for the Catalyst Blueprint. At any given time, you guys can check the chapters if you want to go directly to any of the resources or directly to the Crystallization Catalyst Blueprint Farm. I will also be adding cards in each of the chapters for their designated resources. So that way, if you want to go and watch the whole video directly for the whole resource farm guide and locations, as some of them require precision code breakers and the use of Enzo, so the detailed in-depth guide will be there as well for you. So let's get right down to it. First up, we have have the murky energy residue. With the new changes uh, to the infiltration system, the Forgotten's is still, in my opinion, the best mission to get into. The reason being, especially in the normal mode, you can get at least 10 to 15 every two minutes. I'll leave a card at the top of the screen just to kind of give you guys a whole rundown of the mission. But if you still decide to go into the hard modes, the Forgotten's and the Unknown Laboratory, when you complete the entire mission, whereas if you guys decide to do the hard mode, I would recommend you can go either way, the Forgotten's or the Unknown Laboratory as long as you want to finish the mission you'll end up getting like between 20 to 30 murky energy residue second we have the macromolecule biogel and the best place to farm is the derelict outposts so you can go to the echo swamp whether you go to the derelict covert or the musket swamp it's up to you both outposts it will generally give you up to 22 um, macromolecule biogels per completion it just takes about roughly like 10 to 15 seconds especially if you use share i've also left a card up there for a detailed guide if you guys want to go in and see how it's done third we have the mixed energy residue and the best place to farm is the Agna Desert, which primarily requires Enzo and Precision Code Breakers. And I've shared the card at the top for a detailed video guide on what are the best methods to get those Precision Breakers, as well as the most effective ways of farming in the Agna Desert area. For example, I've also shared some locations in the Vermilion Waste, in the Remnant, as well as the Storage Area. Fourth, we have the advanced neural circuits and the best place to farm is, in my opinion, the borderline of truth in the hard mode section. So I highly recommend to go over here. I've also shared a card at the top of the video just to kind of give you guys the three best farming locations, which would be the most beneficial where you can make almost the same amount and depending on what you want to do. Lastly, we have the crystallization catalyst blueprint. Now, there are a lot of ways you can acquire those, but there are only two methods that I think are the fastest. And and number one being farming a Colossus. Number second being farming for void fusion reactors. Method one, farming devourer. Now farming the devourer is not a big task, to be honest, if you have the right build. This is my Lepix build. I'm sure you can find loads of videos on YouTube similar to it or like their work better than this and whatnot. But for me, this works completely fine. Mainly in the Lepix build, you need two mods that are really required to actually pull this strategy off. First is the Firearm Master and the other one is Dangerous Ambush. Next up, we have the hand cannons. You can go with any, to be honest. I went with uh, Nazestra's Devotion. Uh, primarily, you are looking at the only two mods, uh, which are the fire rate up and sharp precision shot. As for reactors and components, I use this one that gives you skill critical hit damage with damage to Colossus where I use this layer set for my components to get additional skill power. You guys can basically uh, do whatever you want with the builds. You can set it up the way you like it. I'm sure there are other builds out there that are more refined than this. In terms of killing the devourer, I would not recommend doing it in a group lobby unless you have a good team that kills him quickly. One cool thing came out of it is I got the Glade blueprint that I was trying to farm for the longest time, to be honest. You guys can see right here, I actually ended up finishing the devourer in 23 seconds in a group versus solo which uh, you know basically is a lot easier because sometimes you can get stuck with a bad group in a public lobby as you, there's a lot of reviving game if you are not uh, good and up to speed if you guys notice right here i was able to kill him very fast and if you look at the completion time it's like 11 seconds 
The challenge is kind of trying to figure out the fastest way to attain as many blueprints as possible. So with the new changes into the infiltration operation, where you can set it up to 250%, even going into the public lobby, which makes it so much easier to get double the drop rates for these amorphous materials. I do recommend one thing, however, is try to keep an eye out on the score. Sometimes people rush so fast that enemies disappear and you end up losing only by 100 and you miss the second drop. So make sure when you're in the lobby, uh, keep an eye out for the score so you can get that 100. The amorphous material pattern 76 is in the Vesper hard mode on uh, Sepulchre, which you can finish in roughly about three to four minutes, as you can see on the side of the video. Whereas the amorphous material pattern 78 is also in the Vesper hard mode on the shelter, which you can easily finish roughly in three to four minutes, just like uh, the Sepulcher as well. Considering you can finish a mission in four minutes, in one hour, you can roughly do about 15, give or take the loading time and everything. So maybe 14 or something like that, which means uh, if you constantly get two of the amorphous materials per run, you can end up getting up to 30 uh, amorphous material patterns in one hour. Method number two, farming for outposts. Now it takes a bit longer in my opinion than method one, but it is far more easier if you're not set up to kill the devourer yet. As you guys can see right here, I went to my consumables. You can also go into the other places in the access info to find out which amorphous material patterns drop the crystallization blueprint. But I would start with the consumables because this would tell you like what you kind of have and then you can go from there. Now I have a lot of like easy ones. Like I would start from there just to kind of get them out of the way until they introduce something like where you delete them or trigger them in maybe something like that will come in in october the 10th now in terms of their drop like you'll see it's like a 15 percent drop in the easy mode and then a 20 percent drop in the hard mode in terms of the amorphous material patterns for the outpost you can pretty much go anywhere you want because all of them generally uh, have like a wait time of one minute for them to finish and then they reset and right after that, you can do it again. With most of them, it takes like less than 15 seconds to complete. This means you can do three to four outposts at least in the time you would finish one infiltration mission. Now, one thing to consider here is that all amorphous material patterns in the outposts have a drop chance. So you might not be getting them as quickly in terms of like you were doing it in the infiltration mission where you're at least guaranteed two patterns per run. So here, as you guys can see, the amorphous material pattern 82 has an acquisition chance of 25% versus like where you have the infiltration mission which is guaranteed. I also recommend doing it with Sharon so that way like you can get that additional uh, pattern 83 and additional chance uh, increased chance for the stabilizer form as well. Secondly you have to farm the void shards. Make sure your sentence match the same class as the void fragment mission because if for example here this says toxic right here if you don't have a descendant that has toxic ability in this case for example Freyna you won't be able Able to get the inorganic void chart. Now with the recent update, it has become far more easier to finish this void fragment mission. You can finish it within a minute or two. It doesn't take longer than that. If you have more people, it goes even by faster. And the most important thing with the update was that if you notice right here, the inorganic void charts, you can get 45 of this. So because of those 45 void charts that you can get from completing the void mission, now you can kill the fusion reactor boss with just doing one void mission. So step one is getting the amorphous material pattern step two is getting the void shard and then step three is killing the boss so because of that like it's a little bit of a lengthier process whereas in the infiltration you just go do the mission and then you just go do the colossus here you have to kind of do three steps still if you think like you're not able to beat devourer even in a team or solo then i think this is like by far the fastest method to farm the crystallization catalyst blueprint i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys have any questions or comments you can leave it in the comment section below if you guys need help with killing devour or even with the fusion uh, reactor bosses i can always help out you can check out our discord and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe this is hbk grand taking off for the day have a great one guys take it easy